subscribe to Film Companion for your film fix. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. The funniest thing that Vicky Kaushal said after seeing Choke. इसे जब आपको सिनेमा हॉल के लिए फिल्म बनानी पड़ती है तो उसमें सब कुछ एडल्ट होता है नेटफ्लिक्स के लिए फिल्म बनाने की गाली नहीं है इट इन सो मच मोर दस सो मच मोर कॉन्फ्रेंटेशन दैट वेंट ऑन एंड ऑन एंड शी ही सेज दैट तुम्हें मोदी से प्रॉब्लम क्या है ऐसे मुझे मोदी से नहीं तुमसे प्रॉब्लम है सो आई हैव माई गुड पीपल अराउंड मी टू स्टॉप मी फ्रॉम टर्निंग माई फिल्म इन टू ट्विटर Guys, always such a pleasure to have you all on Film Companion. Um, Anurag, I want to start with you. Uh, Choked is, of course, a story of a middle-class housewife who discovers notes in her pipes. Uh, you know, something we would all love to happen to us. <laughs> but, but it's also Anurag uh, a critique of the government, a critique of. policy especially demonetization and you know you've yeah. never been uh, shy about voicing what you think of what is going on in the world around us but i was just curious as you were making the film uh, were you thinking about how far can i push this how far can i take the criticism yeah I, there was a temptation to do that but like i like i said like i have my conscience keepers nehit bhave who's the script writer including sayami roshan rahul my second unit director everybody on the set would fight with me that sequence in the film where on the 10th day of demonetization she's come back from work and he's just heard stories about how how the prime minister grew up and he went to the himalayas and things and he's like in his head he's discovering the what a great man he was and he wants to tell the story of his greatness to his wife who just tired and he's like there was time nahi there was time ke liye kuch nahi hai and that sequence i had written so much more there's so much more confrontation that went on and on and she he says that tumhe modi se problem kya hai aise mujhe modi se nahi tumse problem hai hum sab karo ghar saaf karo bano pradhan mantri my scene I, i wanted to take it further than that it it right went into indira gandhi and it went into where all so <laughs> when it was there and i was doing that scene and that scene bothered everyone right from the beginning except me I said, but that's the truth, and I want to talk about it. And it came to the last day. It was like, and after we had shot, I think more than half the film. And suddenly, I was reading that scene, and Sami and everybody said, "But you know, how can Sarita talk like this? Is Sarita sounding like Anurag on Twitter?" So, <laughs> and that's when when they were Good doing the scene. Good call, Sami. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> so when they were rehearsing and doing the scene, it just seemed so unnatural. I was like, "Listen, you know what? You're right." This is all crap. Just take it out. I said this is not what the film is about. The film is about Sarita and Sushant, and it makes total sense that this woman who works in the bank, she wants to come back to a clean home, and she doesn't have mind space or time to think even about what's going on outside. She's only like, how much more new policies and rules will change, and she just wants to come back to a calm home. And we ended it there. So there was a temptation, and I think one or two places I had that temptation. but good sense prevailed and i took it out because then it would have become a propaganda and answer to a propaganda which i did not want the film to become so so i have my good people around me to stop me from turning my film into twitter <laughs> <laughs> i still remember him after cutting those lines of the paper he came in uh, he told us that ne wo lines when i nikal de was sounding too much like anurag kashyap like it was a discovery and we all looked at each other <laughs> nehit me and sami because we had been telling him the exact same thing for weeks and then he finally and realized nehit, was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's roshan and me used to be trying to calm nehit because nehit was at war with ak with him from like they've been obviously rewriting writing and an actor direct uh, writer and director go through this process but this particular scene nehit was in tears he said i cannot let my film have this and you just like पैसा मिलता है सिंपथी नहीं और जिनको वोट दिया था उनसे आप you know you plead with them um, and what i loved in in that moment is that sort of complete lack of expression pity you know you reached your yeah. 
complete sort of moment of just nothingness now this is this is what it is tell me how did you find the sort of despair and the strength in this moment so i actually have this this film is a really long journey with me because uh, anurag sir kind of locked me on in 2017 and then it was a lot of waiting through nagging him sitting on set with him at sick on sacred game set love story man malzia sacred game too so i have actually lived with the film for very long along with nehit the writer who lived with it even long, longer than me and then roshan who was our lucky charm came in in 2018 and things started moving a little quicker so for me sarita has been with me since 2017 and nehit and i would you know const- constantly talk about her talk about where she came from why she's turned like this why she's become so bitter so it was it was a lot of the back story which helped me in a big way but i also really you know had surrendered to uh, ak style of working where he said don't uh, tum actor log bahut sab kuch complex kar dete ho sab simple rakho theek ho jayega so he said don't complicate things come on set not knowing what you want to do just come on set believing in the moment and just you know be in the moment when we are shooting so i think it was also his style of working which is very different from the schooling that i came from so it was a mixture of that it was a mixture of a uh, little background work that i did i went to a few uh government banks and there was this one particular lady who i used to observe for very long you know it's just this mundane job you do and i think it's every woman in india you know you're working you're slogging it out you come back home and then you have to clean the house listen to your husband's constant advice about sabzi aise banao aise ye karo wo karo so there'll be men just sitting you know telling you what to do there'll be your kid who's going to just be you know throwing his school bag around so it's just a mixture of seeing things even in our house like my dad uh, works a lot but he still instruct my mom a hundred times on you know do 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 that so it was just a mixture of things seeing it from you know different people different places You know that one scene where he says ki teen baar alu kha liye aur paneer banaya karo like you literally want to step into the frame and slap him <laughs> and Roshan I I have to ask you you know I love your performance in Muthon and I am so happy that you are now doing Hindi films uh, but this Thank this you. guy is a tricky one you know Sushant is a tricky yeah. one because you have to you dislike him because he isn't pulling mm. his share of the work uh, Mm. but he's not the villain of the piece uh, you know yeah. there are larger yeah. things at play so how did you yeah. walk that tightrope between making him come off as entitled and annoying like he is but and yet we see his humanity yeah i i, I think i really like the guy i i genuinely like him i i empathize with him i think a lot and and in uh, i don't know if i if i could articulate it this way then but now when i think about sushant like it having been one year after we shot and after having done the whole film it feels like me from where i'm standing right now if everything i'm trying fails that's where i'll end up being and the worst parts of me will be the ones that survive that will be what i will turn to i will give in to uh, my insecurities i will i will have such a tough time dealing with the fact that i am a failure that the that i i will be a terrible person to be around for especially for my loved ones and and sushant lives with sarita this is the woman that he was in love with the woman that he always wanted to be married to and uh, all of those blessings will stop mattering so does th- does that i think i i i had a certain amount of empathy and understanding and love for him which really helped on top of that was the whole experience of uh, doing things the anurag kashyap way which is which is so different from how i've been working in the few films that i've done i i go with a lot of uh, preparation i do my homework i do whatever i think could possibly help and i don't i don't have a set pattern i keep trying new things out for new films but i've never tried this thing of not preparing or not not reading the script before the scene not rehearsing the scenes just get, going there and trying to be fully in touch with your instincts and then you know take it organically as it happens in the moment so uh, that that for me was the best part of the experience anything that's uh, that's come out in sushant that is uh so pricing for people who know me well enough is probably something that's come out of this method that I've never worked under 
Anurag, tell me uh, about the specific challenges of making a film that you know will be on streaming. This is not a film that was supposed to be theatrical and then came on streaming. This is a film for streaming. So, of course, you're not writing a story that leads up to an interval. You're not necessarily worried about a length that will engage the audience. Uh, but you're on a platform where there are thousands of other choices. How do you stand out? You know, how do you write specifically to this medium? See, one, one, the funniest thing that Vicky Kaushal said after seeing Cho, he said, you have to make a film for cinema hall, then everything is adult. You have to make a film for Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Did you not get the memo? You can swear in this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but the thing is, uh, nothing for me, my biggest challenge was like right in the beginning when you read the script and everything, the idea was to get everything right and not like overstep some lines because we were very clear in the sense, the first discussion I remember, we sat down all of us and we said, what are we doing? I said, we are making a Sai Paranjpe thriller. So if Sai Paranjpe was supposed to make a thriller, that's the approach we are going to take. So our characters are that's from a, a Sai Paranjpe thriller. Yeah. That's a wonderful so character. Yeah. So our characters are borrowed from there. And because that's the world I have not seen firsthand, I've seen second hand because I've lived a middle class life. But I have not lived a Maharashtrian middle class life, which is much more trusting, which is much more together. And luckily I have a team like that. Nihir Bhave comes from experience, Sylvester Fonseca, like literally I don't go on Reiki. That's my method of working. So but silver is my literally my partner and Ravi Srivastava who's the production designer. I said there's nothing, everything from the choice of the box that she would buy, what kind of a dry flower that she'll put on the things like that. Every single thing was handpicked and put together by people who were coming from experience. Prashant Savan, who's the head of the costume, is essentially Maharashtrian middle class. They all brought in their experiences. While we were casting, we were insisting on casting. Only Marathi actors who know that. So, but only only time we stepped away from it was casting Reddy because we wanted a Reddy who's born and grown up in Bombay who runs hotels. So that's where we cast Upendra Lime as a Reddy. Other, other, so all those people, also when we would come down, they brought in whatever their experiences with them on the film. Like 70% of the lines that Amrita Subhash says were not in the script. She just, when she got the character, she just went on improvising non-stop without losing her character in a second. And, and, and the her, Sarita struggled to have a conversation with her, became a scene. Because, you know, it, it, they become a perfect kind of a match to each other. So all those things, my thing was just to get it right. If I don't believe in something, because it is such an unbelievable thing that the sink, the money is coming out of the sink. Now, I need to believe it. I need to believe the process of it. So, we had to engineer it. So, Ravi Srivastava and the team, they sat down and said, Aise paise daale honge jali mein, usme jang laga hoga, to wo giri tuti hogi, wo paisa sabse pehle niche wale ghar mein pahuncha hoga, phir wahan pe jam hua hoga, to uske baad dai ke ghar mein pahuncha hoga, phir yahan pe pipe clog hoga, to pipe phatega, phir ye dousra pipe jodega, to Sarita ke ghar mein aayega. So, we are catching the film from the point of view, it starts coming in Sarita's house. Uske pehle yeah. paise niche jaan chukhe, which we figure out later on. So we had to work those things out into the script and to just make it believable because I need to believe it first before I can make anybody else believe in it. And having this experience of no smoking behind me where, where people didn't understand what was going on, this time I didn't want to make the same mistake. I have to say, I like no smoking. You know I'm one of the admirers of no smoking. I know that. <laughs> A lot of people didn't understand. I wanted to reach out. Of course, of course. Okay, uh, Roshan, last question to you. Um, you know, I've, mm -hmm. I, I've been sort of uh, participating in a lot of conversations about what happens now. We have permission to go back on set. We start shooting again. But of course, it's a whole new normal for how we're going to shoot. And somebody said that, you know, the film industries in the South are going to uh, recover much quicker, especially Malayalam, because they are already used to the idea of small crews working very efficiently, very quickly. Uh, tell me, what is one thing that the Hindi film industry can perhaps learn from the Malayalam film industry? And I'm a huge admirer of Malayalam cinema. 
I think uh, for me, what's kept me inspired and what's kept me wanting to do more and more work in Malayalam and what I've seen in uh, only a select few films in Hindi that I've watched is that here the heart of the movie is always the story and the story is always a series of small incidents that happen to regular people who stay very close to, who are very relatable to a common audience. It's when you zoom into that and and detail it enough that this really specific incident or story that happens to one individual becomes universal. So somewhere, I, I guess you, you find that universality in how closely you go into uh, this the small story that you have at hand, which I sometimes miss in most of the Hindi films that I watch. So, uh, and, and for me, for all the times that I've been asked uh, how different it was doing a, a Bollywood film after the Malayalam films that you've done, Choke did not feel all that different because it's exactly that. This could very easily be a Malayalam movie. It ha it's a story of a middle class couple that happens mostly inside their house. This is exactly what we do here 90% of the time. So, <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's and, it. And in terms of just shooting, is there something we can take away from how to be... Actually, Adrag, you're the other one who shoots... I think we need to drastically spare, reduce... Quick. We need to yeah. drastically reduce the number of people on the set. Because, you know, we have. I've, it's taken so long to understand that why do we have so many people on the set. When you see a crew abroad, the cameraman carries his own camera. And there's one focus puller who will be carrying the lenses. But here a camera comes with five people. And it's taken me so long to understand that we buy second-hand cameras. And because they're second-hand and they're not first-hand, because they're, because they're cheaper, we don't get insurance. So because we can't insure them, we have five people protecting everything. So that's how we buy all our equipments. And that multiplies the crew member by five. That comes with equipments. I think there's a whole lot of things we need to do. We, we need to regularize a lot of things to reduce the number of people on the set because a small film also in, in a, a small low budget film has more number of people on a set than a Hollywood production that's happening in India or, or a Malayalam film down south. Just number of people. And because of that, it becomes much more difficult even when the lockdown ends for us to shoot our films because that won't stop. A camera won't come without the five people. Yeah. Lights so those are things you have to work on. Yeah. yeah. I think that's also the really interesting thing that I've seen here where uh, in, in some of the films that I've done, we've had a bigger team uh, or an extension of the team that we have we have on call for the days when we need more people. But on most days when we've charted out a, a fairly straightforward day which, where, where we're mostly doing interiors and all, we call in only the number of people that we want. It's, it's when we suddenly move to a bus stand or a railway station and we need people for crowd control and we need that extra manpower that there are always people available to be called in on those days specifically. So there's, there's really no reason to have all of them when you have a lighter day as well. So the core team, I think, here yeah. sort of stays smaller with the option to expand when you need more people. Okay, and since I haven't been cut off yet, Siami, I have one last question for you. Uh, you know, you said in a lot of interviews that after Mirzia, you were offered films, but you said you kept saying no because none of them were exciting enough. And I, I find that amazing that that you found the sort of the courage to say no to work because it didn't excite you. You didn't just want to be in the sort of public eye in people's mind space. How did you find that courage to just say, no, I'm going to wait for something like Choked that will really sort of, you know, showcase my talent? No, it wasn't easy at all. I promise you that because you sleep. Actors are extremely insecure. Like they are very, very insecure people. I have had the good fortune of having a sporting background. So I kept busy running marathons and doing training for Ironmans and going back to my theater teachers like Adil Hussain and nagging them for time. So I tried to keep connected with the craft in whatever way I could. I was definitely auditioning for a whole lot of things, which I hoped I would have gotten, but then they went ahead with more sellable actors. So it wasn't easy at all, but uh, there were certain films where they said, Chalo, naj gana hai, do teen gaane hai. That's the kind of stuff which, you know, I, I just felt that I'm in a position where I'm not doing this for the money and I'm doing this for the love of the craft. So I had the good fortune of saying that, you know, 
with all due respect people like this but this is something i don't want to do at this point in my life so i kind of just kept going in uh, uh, keeping it going thankfully i met uh, ak in 2017 he kept me going saying that i should go and mommy by saying, okay really yes, he met in mommy that's where i was offered this film i was sitting after a long wow. day of four five films yeah <laughs> so he so i used to keep going back to him saying this is what's been offered to me and he used to guide me very correctly saying that you know do stuff here or do stuff here or don't do stuff here so there was also correct guidance which i was getting which i was very fortunate with nice guys thank you so much this has been fun and congratulations on the film uh good thank luck so and and keeps thank on you. thank you